Okay, so now that we've seen this uh, hyperbolic motion, we want to know uh, uh, some more stuff about it. Particularly, determine the WL potentials for a charge in hyperbolic motion. Okay, we saw the motion last time. Again, my copy and paste forgot the negative on the infinity, so the left of T. Um, but we want to assume the point R is on the x-axis and to the right of the charge. Okay, let's doodle what that looks like. We have the origin, we have W at the retarded time. The point is to the right of that, so we have a length x to the point. The script R is between the W and the point. So now we can set everything up when we need to. Again, what we need to know is the WL potentials. Uh, given as such, and a retarded time and position. We've seen that uh, just a couple questions ago. Um, so uh, a word of warning, this is a notoriously tricky uh, to deal with. So we have a lot of papers to reference and I will have them in the description below. Um, this is, will end up in a paradox, which we will run into here shortly. So let's dive in. First task is to find a retarded time. Well, we know that from R minus WTR is equal to C times T minus TR. We have to find the TR from the W and the explicit TR from being multiplied by C. So plug W in, hyperbolic motion. We got that pretty easy. Again, uh, magnitude wise, I think we can, we know we're to the right, so we're going to be positive. Uh, so now it's just a matter of uh, solving this darn thing for, um, yeah, solving it through for TR. Algebra comes in once again. Uh, take the square root, put it on the other side. Uh, take that uh, C term, push it to the left, and now we can square everything. Uh, square away, factor, foil, whatever you need to. Uh, what we see here is that after we expand, uh, looks like we're going to have a cancellations with the R or the red terms, excuse me. Uh, cool, get rid of them, let them simplify through, refactor down. Uh, you see the terms in purple go to a, another uh, uh, factorable form. Again, color coding saves you a lot of time and uh, mess with this, so to speak. So if we're trying to solve for TR, what we're gonna have to do is uh, push that purple term over and then divide by all the constants on TR. And so we do that. You know, we see that T of R is equal to B squared minus uh, uh, parentheses X minus C T squared over 2C uh, divided by, or 2C times X minus C uh, T. And you see, just by finding the retarded time, we know we're gonna have a mess on our hand coming up here shortly. So we know for the potential, we need the velocity but it is in the same direction as a separation vector. So we have script RC minus uh, uh, boldface R dot V. Again, same direction. So that dot product goes to magnitude R, magnitude V, uh, cosine of zero, which is one, easy enough, no big deal. So what we get is script R C minus V, okay, which script R we know is C minus T, or rather C times T minus TR. We already know what TR is. We already know everything else we need to. So with that, we have V at TR is equal to the prime or the uh, time derivative of W at TR. So we just, you know, we know the square root for hyperbolic motion. Bring the one half down, use your chain rule, the twos cancel, and we're left with C squared over TR with that square root of uh, b squared plus c uh, c squared tr squared. I put this in terms of green so we could reference our last question when we uh, were trying to find the retarded time and we could just substitute in the x for that. Um, reason why, now we can simplify things down and to a manner that might be useful later. So with that, then we rejoin everything in terms of x minus ct and now we see here that if we want what's in the denominator for the potential, i.e. the uh, script RC minus uh, script R dot V, well, the C times T minus TR is fine. 
now we have the C minus V term that needs to be dealt with. And in order to simplify the term in the bracket, we need to have a common denominator. Hence, C gets multiplied by 1 in the common denominator form. Now you see that we have a C squared TR term that cancels. And we're left with a uh, C squared T minus TR times X minus CT all over CTR plus X minus CT. What a gigantic mess thus far. Okay, and just when we thought we were making progress, we now need to plug in the retarded time and simplify. Might be best to do this in parts, so let's start with the denominator. Okay, here we have CTR plus X minus CT. Plug in that TR that we found. We see that the C's cancel, no big deal. But what we're left with in the other term is that we have to again find a common denominator. Okay, well, to do that, we multiply by 2 over x minus c, t. So, uh, yep, we had a 2x minus ct squared from the right-hand side of that. And we combine that with the b squared minus the other square. So, oddly enough, or nicely enough, a factor cancels. And we're left with uh, b squared plus x minus ct squared all over 2x minus ct. All right. Now for the numerator, we only have a TR in the T minus TR space. So with that, we have T minus the um, retarded time, which we found earlier. Now again, with, with the common denominator, so I'm only gonna keep uh, that negative sign distribute to the numerator B and negative X minus C T squared. Okay, so we do that, we find a common denominator. Now we're just looking to cancel everything out with the x minus c's, uh, cancel down what we can, factor, factor, all the fun stuff, blah, blah, blah. Algebra, 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 use all of the tools you know. Uh, distribute the x minus ct, x plus ct, find that those cross terms cancel, beautiful. And then we're left with x squared minus c squared, t squared minus b squared, all over 2c, uh, and then times x minus ct. Now, recombining these into the potential form, we see that we have 1 over script rc minus script r dot v, uh, and then we see that we have ctr squared, or excuse me, ctr plus x minus ct over c squared t minus tr x minus ct. All right, so again, let's uh, try to simplify everything accordingly so we're not too uh, aggravated with the results here. We throw everything in that we already found and combine down. We found what T minus TR is. We found what the numerator was. So now that we're ready to do this, we plug everything in and we see we get a lot of cancellations. In the red, we see that the twos cancel. We have a factor of C canceling with the C squared from the form. We have a factor of X minus C canceling out with the T minus TR terms. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of cancellations that need to be taken care of. And so we see the simplified after the cancellations. And thus, if we plug this into V, what we see is that QC from the form gets can the C from the QC gets canceled with the C from the denominator. And we see what the potential is for the um, scalar potential is for hyperbolic motion. Holy moly, what a mess. Um, I have to warn you now that the paradox occurs by the fact that um, the the LW potentials yields an electric field that is in violation of Gauss's law. Again, I'll discuss it more in the description with the papers, and uh, we'll see exactly what's going to be a mess about it soon. That being said, the uh, vector potential is equal to V over C squared times the scalar potential. So if we plug in the results that we found from V, right, then we see that the c squares cancel and we're left uh, in the x hat direction times the scalar potential. Again, we have to plug in now the tr terms, which we already found what tr was uh, and what we found, we already found what vx or v was, excuse me. So we need to plug in tr in the numerator. We do that and then we need to plug in what c tr plus uh, x and all that other stuff is. Um, 
whatever. I think we see what we need to do. I color coded it, color coordinated it as much as I could. And we need to be very careful plugging in the TRs for everything. And we see that we just get that one over C factor. And uh, it hangs in hangs in there with us. And we're able to, you know, simplify down. Pretty similar. Just that one over C hangs out. Um, yeah, just be very, very careful with how you uh, approach these problems. They don't get any easier. They're always a mess. And uh, be very careful defining your terms.